Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with Vicente Pascual. Vicente is one of the co-founders of the company Cabify and is currently serving as the vice president of Last Mile Delivery for its services here in Madrid. Vicente is one of our alumni and we're very proud of him. He did the master's in advanced finance in 2011 uh, and then went on to found this company, Cabify, which is the first Spanish unicorn. It crossed the line at 1.4 billion valuation. We're very proud of Vicente and anxious to hear what he has to share with us. So how are you? How was your summer? Fine, it was actually very good. Uh, I managed to take a um, couple of weeks off and really disconnect. And now I'm, I'm ready for the battle again. Yeah. I, ma I imagine in a, in a company like Cabify, um, vacation was not something, especially in the early days, that you had very much of. No, no, not really. I mean, uh, uh, we, we tend to say that, that we never sleep. I mean, that there's always something, there's always a new situation. Uh, or if there is not, we have uh, quite uh, challenging uh, goals that we have to fulfill. So uh, things are always moving. Just out of curiosity, speaking of, of vacation, and I mean, would you say that your the first couple of years of Cabify, I mean, everyone would guess that those were much mm -hmm. harder than than let's say now, where you're much bigger. Is that true, or are there is, is now equally stressful or more stressful? Ah, uh, no, that's a good question. There's a lot of oversight now on you. And I mean, at the very beginning, uh, we used to work. Uh, I mean, all day. I mean, there was no stop. We were always uh, thinking about the business, uh, working in the business, um, traveling around. And, and that's part of it, because uh, otherwise you're not going to make it. I mean, you, you need to keep pushing forward. Uh, and if you don't do that, uh, things are not going to happen. Uh, and, and I was a little bit younger or a lot more <laughs> younger. Uh, and, and I did and I do uh, love what I do. So it was not um, something, uh, it was not a punishment, it was something that I really enjoyed. So I was very glad to do that. Now, you, we still have the pressure. I mean, you have to deliver and there are things moving out and, and the team is uh, quite bigger and there are new uh, problems and challenges. But in terms of working hours, I mean, um, we, we work uh, lesser uh, hours and, uh, and most of us, we start to have uh, families and we need to, well, Spend time, find yeah. a balance. I mean, you, so you mentioned that, you know, the, the, the you have a sense of purpose or passion, I mean, I think with the business that you love what you do. Um, is that how you chose? I mean, so you're in a very, I mean, you're, for many people out there, this is an exciting, this is mobility, this is, you know, uh, ride hailing, et cetera. It's a very exciting part of the kind of the new economy, so to speak. But was it a passion or was it, or was it just an idea that popped into your head and it, you guys decided to found this company? In my case, it was about uh, serendipity. I mean, uh, I have always wanted to, to uh, become an entrepreneur and, and start a new company. Uh, uh, but at the time uh, I entered in Cabify, uh, I wasn't still ready to, to um, uh, change careers, uh, um, make something new. Uh, that was something that I have in my mind for, I don't know, three, five more years uh, afterwards. But, but a good friend of mine uh, came into the picture and uh, he told me, I, I'm launching this company. Um, this is the concept. We, we are going to well, uh, disrupt uh, the transportation system um, globally. Uh, and I so said, big oh, vision, big there. vision. This, this sounds good. Uh, count me in. And, and that's how I started. Uh, just uh, by someone who thought about me uh, being interested in that. And you study, so you studied advanced finance with mm -hmm. us here at IE Business School. And before here, you had studied as an undergrad, I think, op engineering or operations, right? I, I actually uh, studied uh, business administration. But with a... But my background has always been in, in the operations side of, of businesses. So was that, I mean, the reason that you, you ended up loving this job, was it because you, yes, had the, you were mean, the ops guy yeah. for, for, the, for the company, right? Yes, uh, at the very beginning, I had um, a dual role in finance and, and operations, but, but very soon enough, uh, I found that uh, it was probably better if uh, I choose one uh, and I did choose uh, the operational side. 
And when we started, uh, this was uh, it's still very important, uh, but when we started, there was mm, almost no technology. I mean, what we had was very basic. The people were still uh, getting used to smartphones. Mm -hmm. So a lot of what we did uh, was uh, pure old school uh, operational stuff. Uh, and, and I really did enjoy that, that part of the business. Just to set the time frame, what, what, what year was this? The, that was uh, 2012. Year. Okay. Uh, and we started in Spain, which was uh, 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 more, a little bit more uh, in the middle of the wave of the new technologies. Uh, and then we moved past to uh, Latin America, which were uh, a little bit behind. I mean, like one or two years behind in terms of uh, smartphone uh, adaptation and um, internet usage and so on. So we, we, we did go there. Um, Perhaps it was even a little bit too early. I mean, uh, it, it was a challenge for us to find drivers, not only who had a smartphone, but who, who knew how to use one. Um, yeah, 2012, I mean, yeah, smartphones. Yeah. Yeah. It was, yeah. Very I new, think yeah. the iPhone had mm, uh, three years, the iPhone one. So everything was still uh, being created. The apps was something like still quite new. Yeah. And how did you, so I mean, you could have, I mean, you wanted, you had a global vision, you and your co-founder. Mm -hmm. I mean, but the the global vision could have started more with an emphasis on all Europe, let's say. Uh, I mean, you guys were based in Spain, but you chose Spain and LATAM. Why? Mm. Why? What was the what was the reasoning behind that? Well, uh, first, I, I make a, a correction. Uh, we were five co-founders. Uh, five co-founders. Okay. Just yes. two, but yeah. Um, having said that, why Latin America and Spain are not other places? Well, uh, at that time we could have uh, go anywhere because uh, we were pioneers in, in this in Europe and we were pioneers in Latin America uh, and the market was open for to go anywhere and, and we did um, of course made uh, some market study and what we find is that in Europe you had a couple of hurdles in, in terms of uh, not only regulation because uh, that, that's something that you find uh, elsewhere but, but in terms of uh, well, the uh, investment that you need to, to make in order to have drivers. Uh, multiple uh, languages. And... Yes, multiple languages. Uh, and in Latin America, we found um, uh, three things. The, the, the first one is that um, taking a taxi in the street was, and it still is in some places, uh, a little bit unsafe. So there was very good match, something that we could offer that, that, that had a lot of value. Uh, the next one is, is that the investment that we had to make there uh, was lower than in Europe, and we were not exactly in, uh, swimming in cash at the very beginning. Uh, and the third one is um, that we have a good network of, of people that, that we mm -hmm. knew there and were willing to, to be a part of the project. And that was something that we really valued uh, at that time, uh, and nowadays too, but at that time it was crucial. To have someone on board which did not only have the abilities to to make them, uh, to push the business and make things happen, but but also that we could trust uh, blindfolded, mm -hmm. uh, and we found those people in Latin America, uh, and actually uh, a couple of them that are still in the company. Uh, I mean, uh, 12 years after, because we we had a good report uh, previous uh, to to start this, uh, and we have. We are not yeah. only business partners, we are friends. And, and that's something that uh, it's quite valuable. Um, I'm curious now, back to your, sorry, back to your, um, your, your point that you were five founders. So I, when I, I did a startup mm -hmm. during the early days of the internet, when the internet was just starting with myself and one other founder. And we had our moments, for mm -hmm. sure, you know, where we had some, some, some important moments that, uh, of conflict. Uh, how was that with five founders? Did you guys ever get along the whole time or were there some pretty serious frictions at times? Well, uh, actually, uh, um, the company started uh, with um, two co-founders, uh, uh, CTO and uh, Juan, who was uh, the, the, the CEO. Uh, and then like uh, three, four months after, uh, when it was still uh, a Very PowerPoint small. presentation, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, another three jumped in, into the company. Uh, and I think that, uh, I mean, we did have our moments, uh, but I think it was quite clear from the very start what was uh, our area uh, of um, decision. 
So you, you define so, your responsibilities and roles. Yes, I mean, and well. then when, when those areas uh, mix, and, and uh, that's where the uh, challenges uh, arise, and we did have our uh, moments uh, and, and discussions. I'm not going to say uh, uh, they didn't happen, but most of the time we knew what to do, uh, and no one uh, messed around in what the others were doing. So, so that uh, worked for us, and, <laughs> and I think. That was due uh, to a very good selection of people. I mean, uh, we were people with different um, abilities, different passions, interests. So it was easy to say, okay, I'm in charge of this, you're in charge of that, and mm -hmm. that worked. If you have people who more or less do the same, that's when things are probably going to get, either they go extremely well, or right. you're gonna clash. And did you have any pre-discussions or early discussions about how you would handle conflict, any processes that you kind of, even even informal ones that you put in place to There was safeguard. one one rule that, that we had uh, at the very beginning, uh, which was uh, we only hire people uh, that I want to have a beer uh, after work, a beer or two, or maybe three. Um, and I think it was not Britain, but we had a, a very strong culture. I mean, we respect each other and, and we were good friends. And I mean, and, and the job it was, wasn't a job that you end uh, mm -hmm. at the end of the afternoon, I, I just leave to my place. I mean, we went out, we had dinner. Uh, As founders. Protein, yes. And with, your, and with your staff. Yeah. I mean, not because it was mandated, because, because it, we wanted to do that. I mean, mm -hmm. we were looking at each other continuously. So, uh, and that's something that's still in the um, DNA of the company. I think that one of the things that people value about being Cabify is that very strong sense of community and the good rapport that we have uh, among all the employees. I think, and I think it's very valuable uh, and it took us a lot um, to realize the value of, uh, of the culture in the company. Mm -hmm. We took it for granted because, I mean, we didn't think about it, it just happened that, that things were good and people were friends and, and we all uh, managed to keep aside uh, well, the personal differences uh, in, in the sake of the business. Uh, but after a couple of years when we uh, grow bigger, we realized, okay, we, we need to shut down what has worked uh, from this arrangement and yeah. how the, uh, even if it was created organically, how can we keep it in the company in a more formal way? Like skill up best practices and exactly, yeah. And did was there any things that you had to change once you got really big? Uh, in terms of staff practices, talent development, those kinds of yes, topics. Yes, I mean, uh, on one hand, you need uh, you need processes. I mean, uh, the, the, there is no way you, you can scale without processes. Uh, and especially in the uh, human resources department and in the people department, uh, you need very strong processes. People need to know why someone uh, is getting promoted or, mm -hmm. or why you are not getting a raise this year or, or why this individual is doing that. Uh, you need to uh, make people very clear what the goals are, uh, where, where are you in terms of obtaining those goals and um, what's the path uh, that you have uh, beyond uh, the media term. At the very beginning, it was just growth. We were not thinking about that. It was, okay, uh, we need someone to go, I don't know, um, to Aguascalientes in Mexico. Who's in? I mean, okay, go. Um, but at some point, mm -hmm. uh, it's, uh, who is the person that we need to go there and why? And how do we um, create a process to people, uh, for people to be informed that, that we need this kind of individuals and, and what can you do in order to uh, well qualify for, for those kind of positions. So I have to ask because I think many people out there, myself included, um, will never have the chance to, to be involved in a, in a company where you start it and then it, you know, it goes from being a donkey to a horse and then it crosses that magic line to being mm -hmm. a unicorn, uh, which you guys did. So uh, could you share with us just how did that feel? What, what did you guys do when you found out that you crossed that, that magic line? Well, um, it was a little bit, uh, not, not uh, that much ago, but, but I'm not sure How if I recall correctly everything that happens. I think it was 
like four years four ago. Four years ago, okay. Uh, I do remember that, that we made a um, um, little celebratory dance, like in the middle <laughs> of the office, and people were, well, what's going on? And then we explained. Uh, and the, the thing is that we have been, uh, for so many years, uh, pushing the business and going for the next thing, and, and that at some point you think, okay, we might be on the path, and if we arrive there, we might do uh, this big party or whatever, uh, and then things are not that easy, uh, mm -hmm. and, and um, usually they, they never happen. Uh, and it took us mm, some years to get there uh, from when, when we started fantasizing about the idea. So Was when it in we your get mind? There, Do you have that as a goal, as a team? Not really, actually. I, 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 at that time, it was like uh, an extremely good vanity uh, uh, KPI or vanity metric. Uh, and I'm not going to say that, that we didn't uh, fancy it, but, but it was not like the goal. I mean, our goal is not to get there. When we managed to do it, we were quite happy, we were extremely happy. But it, that's the thing. It was, okay, now, so what? I mean, we are here. It doesn't really change anything. So... Let's keep moving, mm -hmm, uh, and, mm -hmm. and it was not like, mm, okay, stop all the machines and, and let, let's do something. We said, okay, next one. So what, one question I want to ask you is, uh, so at, the, at I Business School now, we, we have this idea we call impact skills, mm -hmm. this concept, which is the idea that, you know, if you work in marketing, you have good technical skills in marketing, finance mm -hmm. and operations in your case, uh, you need to have, you know, you got to have those career specific skills. but. Many times it's the it's other skills that that allow people to be you know to really make things happen at work in difficult situations that we all have mm -hmm. with difficult people that we all work with right and et cetera et cetera. So I'm wondering though in your experience now having worked with and hired and and, and probably dismissed many people um, you know if you think about the job specific skills and and balancing those with these impact type skills like like thinking people the ability to think and solve business problems and formulate mm -hmm. them and Really to plan work and, and do project management, et cetera. I mean, how, how do you balance those in your hiring practices and what, in your experience, if you had to say, which of those two do you think leads, drives success greater? Uh, in the, in, particularly in the, let's say, the early to mid stages of people's careers. In the early to mid stages uh, of people's careers and, and of um, a new business, I, I would say it's the. Um, it's not the technical abilities. It's not the technical no, the, I thought you were no, going to say the opposite, actually. No. I mean, uh, well, it depends on what you want to do. I mean, if you mm -hmm. want to become an expert in finance or in digital marketing, it, I mean, you, you need the abilities. Uh, but, but if you want to be an entrepreneur, I mean, uh, it's not what it counts. I mean, what it really counts, it's, uh, I would say, the, the ability to create a team uh, and, and it doesn't matter if you are um, the CEO and you have to uh, give the strategy for the, for the whole company or you're working in a business unit uh, mm -hmm. and it's solely that unit, but, but you need to create a team, you, you need to uh, give direction for the people and you need to, to um, coalesce and, and um, create the culture for things um, to move. Uh, and I think that's... Uh, we took a lot of bets uh, at the very beginning. On, peop um, on people? Yes, on yeah. people. Uh, there was no one with experience in, in uh, smartphone applications. There, there was uh, digital marketing existed, but there, it was not suitable for, for apps. So no one had the uh, technical skills mm -hmm. on that. Uh, so we were not looking for that because it didn't exist. Uh, we were looking for um, talented individuals who could really uh, who were resourceful. I mean, so the, so when you say talented individuals, so resourceful, you mentioned is one one of these yeah. kinds of impact type skills. What are what are the other top ones on your list? Well, I, I would say um, you need you need to believe in what you do, and that's not uh, an ability, but you need to show it. Like a purpose, yes. you know, show purpose and passion. Yes, because you are going out there and say, okay, um, this is my app. Uh, it really does what we say that it does, but mm, it has a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. but, but this is going to be big and this is going to work uh, and uh, you are going to see it very fast, very soon. Uh, and if you don't really 
are capable of transmitting it, no one is going to trust you. I mean, not investors, not, not in our case, we, we are a marketplace, so not the drivers, not the users, no mm -hmm. one. Uh, and you need someone who, who can really convey that uh, to other people. Uh, and you also need someone who can find the appropriate people um, to move uh, and, 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 and to create a team. And, and I think that sometimes we believe that um, a, a team is the sum of the uh, abilities of the mm -hmm. people, but, but it's not. Uh, a, a team goes beyond that. Uh, you, you create synergies on, on how the people get on with each other and, and how they are managed to, to work uh, with each other. Uh, and you need um, the kind of people that are going to fit in your culture and, and are going to um, create more than, than the sum of the parts. Mm -hmm. And you need someone who can um, really view how this is going to be in two or three years and what kind of people uh, mm -hmm. do I need to sum in, in each step. Uh, and we do, I mean, I remember hiring um, a 23-year-old um, guy from uh, Colombia uh, and another 23-year-old uh, from Brazil, mm -hmm. and I was amazed with them. I mean, like, wow. I mean, they well, have what, no what, experience, but these people, they are extremely good. What stood out about them to you? It was the view that they had on the market, uh, the amount of work that they had uh, taken into thinking about it, the, the, their passion. I mean, they were really passionate about what we were trying to, to create, uh, and they were, uh, frankly, quite intelligent. I mean, they, they, mm -hmm. they really see the nuances, what the problems could be. They don't necessarily knew how to solve them, but if you know before doing it what the promise can be, um, you probably will find the solutions. Mm -hmm. So for, uh, foresight in a way, and the ability yeah. to not just understand the and current ability situation, to, to but where it's going. understand complex situations and just uh, well divide it in, in a small task and, and tackle mm -hmm. one after the other one. Uh, and these two guys, one is the country manager of Spain right now, uh, and the other is the country manager from for Colombia, uh, and they moved so they very did, fast they in well, the organization. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they did extremely well. Did they have technical skills? Not really, but, but they have uh, the ability to learn on the way. And that, that's something that I guess when you become a, um, a bigger organization, more structured, uh, you start to forget. I mean, you don't, it's not that easy to make that kind of bets. And you need someone that has all the checks. Okay, I need someone that fills this specific position and I need this and this and this and this. Uh, and it doesn't necessarily work that way. I think that, uh, okay, maybe you lack some checks, but, but you have uh, other things in you and you have the capability to learn all this mm -hmm. along the way. I'm wondering when you were with us in, in your in master's in, mm -hmm. in, in, in advanced finance and you, like every program, and I, you have a highly diverse group of people from mm -hmm. all over the world in your, in your class. Um, and, and you worked in teams a lot. In fact, a big, yeah, we, big part of your grade depended on teamwork, right? Yes. Um, which is our model. So, um, d d were there any things you, you can pull out of that experience? I mean, for sure you had some some turbulence, some friction that went on in those teams. Any, yes. any things you extracted from that that helped you later uh, in the company in terms of team building, which yes. you mentioned is yes. a key skill? Yes. I, I think that one important thing is um, um, cultural differences. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, they, they are easily um, uh, overseen. Uh, and you don't think that they are that important, but, but they are. And especially in the relationship with Spain and Latin America, because we speak the, the same languages, we, we tend to think that we are more or less similar uh, culturally. And we're not. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's something that, that you need to learn. Uh, and it's better if you learn it uh, while, while you're studying than that the hard way when, when doing business. And, and that's something we are had a lot of people here in Spain from, from different nationalities because we have people from Brazil, Peru, Colombia. In the company. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and the company here in, in Madrid offices. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the thing is that now we understand each other. We, we know how people from Chile, I mean, this is a cliche. I mean, everyone is not the same, but, but there are differences between the way people sure, from Peru sure. and people from Chile, Spain, Colombia think. And we now know them, uh, and then well, it makes things uh, easier to, to do. But if you don't know them, 
there's going to be a lot of misunderstandings, there, there's going to be a lot of even anger uh, in some people about the way you handle business and conversations. And, and I think that that's something I really learned here. Mm -hmm. Because you, you find here from even more diverse cultures and you have people from, I don't know, China and then people from East Europe. And they are very Big different. differences, yeah. yeah, yeah, of course. And, and, and on that topic, so we talk about the idea of um, game-changing moments. Mm -hmm. kind of, and those could be, you know, moments where it's a particular moment where some of us can say, okay, I got some feedback or something happened and mm -hmm. it really, I questioned something fundamental about myself, my thinking, whatever, my behaviors, and I made some changes or sometimes it's more of a, you know, it's a, it's a more of a gradual process. Mm -hmm. um, any game changing moments that, uh, that you, you could share with us that you went through? Yeah. Yes, I, I, I think the, the, there are a couple, but um, very recently, uh, I took a, a sabbatical, a four-month sabbatical. Uh, okay. I was uh, in charge of the ride-hailing part of, of the uh, Cabify's uh, operations, which is uh, right now, it's most of it. And after 10 years, I, I, I was tired. Uh, I mm -hmm. was mentally and physically tired. Uh, and I realized that that I need to change. I mean, it was not going to be good for me or, or for the organization to just keep, keep in that position uh, and not make anything. Uh, and it was life changing because it helped me to to well uh, have um, some space, uh, um, some separation, and, uh, and coming back because I really love the company, the people, and what we do. Uh, I'm in the logistics side now. I'm really happy uh, to be in there, but. I had to take some time off uh, mm -hmm. to, to realize this. And I also realized something, uh, which is that the uh, once you have the correct um, culture and, and a structure, uh, individuals are just a tiny part of it. I thought, oh, well, well, I'm not sure if I can do this. I mean, uh, which one is going to come back after me and um, what's yeah. going to happen? I was worried about that. Uh, and at the end, I mean, uh, we find someone who's, uh, uh, I would say, uh, better than me in, in most of the areas. So that was a good chance for the organization. Uh, and, and it was smooth, it was fast. Um, and people were, um, I mean, the, the, there was um, uh, not really a big impact on that. Uh, and I realized, wow. Uh, this makes you think. I mean, a lot of times you you you, you uh, feel the pressure of, of the world. I mean, and, and we need to go and do this and do that, and, and it, you tend to think that this this is something that um, it's on me, uh, and it's not. It's on the whole organization, and, and if you manage to uh, to make that clear, and if the organization is is well prepared to, to do that. Uh, leaders go and pass uh, and things continue. And that was good for me because it, it really liberated me from, from the pressure of uh, my decisions and what I do um, are um, completely crucial. Mm -hmm. uh, and it makes you be a little bit more free on what you do, on what you decide, on what you propose. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think um, that's good. That's good because people can uh, be a part of um, the whole decision process in, in, in a more um, open way. Uh, and I think that's good because uh, it shows that the responsibility uh, between um, uh, all the team. Uh, and it's not that it wasn't before, it was that, that I was just feeling that uh, it was more on me than it was. It really was. Well, I think I mean, in some ways, the psychographics and dem I mean, of work and how people see work and they, how they balance work with the rest of their lives is, is very much changing. Probably the, the pandemic catalyzed things, yeah. but these things were in process before. And, and one of the things, the one topic of conversation we have here with students and with with alumni is the idea of business with purpose. We call it the idea that uh, many many people now uh, say, "Look, you know, I." I have my job and, it, I, and I want to do something that's meaningful to me. And I'd also like to make contact as using my business skills, using you know, what I know mm -hmm. to 
to make a difference in some way. And it could be at the level of the sustainable business in the planet. It could be at the level of social entrepreneurship weekends or little sabbaticals doing mm -hmm. social innovation projects, or, or it could just be being a good person to work with or creating a very inclusive environment in the company. So I'm wondering in, in terms of Cabify uh, as, as a company, uh, what, what are you guys, you at the, you know, sustainability obviously is, yeah. the world of mobility is important. Are you guys involved in any kind of social projects or, or in terms of diversity and inclusion? Yeah. I mean, think, I'm curious to know what you guys are doing yeah, in yeah. these things that we've defined as purposeful ways of doing business. Yeah, yes, we are. In terms of sustainability, that, that's something that we have always pursued uh, from, from the very beginning. Uh, because we, we realized that, uh, I mean, uh, we can have a very big impact on, on, on transportation. And, and we really thought about this at the very beginning and said, okay, things can really change if we do something about this. And if we get big enough, uh, we can make cities greener and, and had less use of the private vehicle. Uh, um, I think we were the first that uh, started compensating emissions and we are working on, on getting an uh, electrical fleet uh, as fast as we can. It depends on the country and mm -hmm. Spain is easier to, to do than, than in Latin America. Uh, and that was always part of our DNA. Uh, and in terms of inclusion, uh, I mean, at the very beginning, we were not really thinking about this. But we, we very soon realized uh, from our drivers uh, that there was a lot that we could do there. I mean, uh, especially in Latin America, a lot of the drivers, I mean, there are uh, different segments. People who have um, high education and, and they like to doing that on the weekends or, or they are um, changing jobs. Uh, but there is also a lot of people who want to be uh, middle class in, in their countries and, and they are really working on it. Uh, and, and being a reliable partner with them is something that has an impact. And, and we talk with a lot of drivers, hundreds of drivers. Uh, and and you, at the very beginning, we, we knew by name a, a lot of them. And, and they were telling you their stories and yeah. the impact the company had on, on the way lives. of life. Uh, and it was truly insightful. I mean, we realized, wow, we, we can do, I mean, if we do be... things good, these people, they are going to change their life. So that's something that we started pushing um, with a purpose. Uh, and, and from there, we, well, we have um, tried to move a little bit faster than, I mean, not because it's going to be a differentiation from value, uh, because we, we truly believe in it. Uh, and we get in an agreement with the uh, Inter-American Development Bank uh, to get more women um, driving. When you talk with the, the women and, and they tell you why they are not uh, driving and you realize what their daily situation is and, and what the problems that, that they face. Uh, it, it's uh, eye-opening. So that was part, I mean, was that part of the, the original and early vision was to, in a sense, you know, be part of stimulating a, a, a new gig economy. I mean, now it's, everybody talks about it, but then it, when you guys started, that was a very novel idea. It, it, was, that, it, was that part of the conversation you guys had or was it something that you kind of fell into? It's there? something that we find a lot, um, very soon. I mean, when we went to Latin America and we found out how we could help the drivers uh, and we found that the drivers were truly, um, I mean, I wouldn't say happy, but, but, but they, 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 they found that we were a, a, a good partner um, to be with uh, and that we're mm, helping them and, and that's something that uh, has a feedback effect. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you, you talk with them and they say, okay, this, these are my pains, and, and you try to make processes to help them, and then they are more happy, and, and, and you receive that back, uh, not only in terms of the company, but you receive that back in terms of yourself or, and, and the impact that you have. Mm -hmm. uh, so you keep pushing it, uh, and that became an integral part of the company. So how we can make, um, this happen, how we can make the people from the gig economy um, uh, more happy with their lives uh, and more uh, 
integrated uh, into the um, uh, medium class of, of the societies. And actually, we, we launched a, a, a spin-off uh, called uh, LANA, which was a, a financing um, a fintech for, for the gig economy, mm -hmm. because we found that there was a, a, a good, um, there was a gap there. Mm -hmm. I mean, there, there was no one offering them uh, financial services. Uh, so we like were not micro, the only ones who had that idea. Yes. Microcredit, yeah. Uh, uh, we were not the only ones having that idea and that there was an explosion of, of uh, those kinds of, of companies. But we arrived there because we were talking with the drivers and they were telling us, this is something I need and this is something you can't provide because, uh, I mean, it's not part of the business and it's difficult to do, it, but, but it's something that we need. I mean, otherwise, mm -hmm. if I'm, if I can't work for, for, for a month or if I need to make uh, some change in the car, it's very difficult for me because I have no credit record. Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm working in the gig economy, so how help can me, I? Help me, yeah. yeah. Help me, help me. Yeah. What can I do? And we said, okay, well, we, yeah. we can try to do this. Um, shifting gears a little bit, I mean, so mm -hmm. we have our audience out of, of alumni and students out there and. Um, People always, you've been very successful, obviously, in, in this startup that's now a big company. Um, advice for, for, for our community in terms of you know, success in business, what are, what are some lessons or some keys that, that you've discovered in your experience? <laughs> I mean, this is going to sound- <laughs> It's a tough really, question. This is going to sound really cliche, but, but uh, I, I truly believe it. I mean, in terms of uh, success in, in, in business, I mean, if you're, Becoming an entrepreneur, uh, just uh, focusing on success in terms of uh, um, economic, financial metrics, uh, whatever, becoming a unicorn, uh, don't do it. I mean, you, you, you need to do it because you are passionate about building the business. I mean, if you don't achieve a major success, good for you, excellent. But, but what you want to do is not having, oh, of course, you want to have success, but, but the, the yeah. main driver is to build a business. You have to be passionate about that. Uh, and if you are not, mm, then it's probably not for you. I mean, uh, there, there are probably other ways that you can have uh, financial success and um, in other industries which are more easy uh, and more reliable in, in creating a path uh, to go there. Uh, and the other one, it's uh, have fun. I mean, this is when you talk with entrepreneurs and they say, okay, we, we always say this, no, have fun, have fun. And then you are uh, under the weight of expectation, under the weight of your investors uh, telling you to grow more and you are not having fun. Yeah. But, but, uh, but in some sense you do because you are doing what you like and, and there's a passion and you want to go there. Uh, even when you are extremely pressured, it, that there is a part of you that that's that's enjoying it, and that's what keeps you passionate. I mean, are you happy and smiling all the time? No, you're not. Uh, but I think you're having fun. Well, Vicente, thank you for uh, taking the time. You're busy. Uh, you're back from your sabbatical. Uh, you're busy. So thanks for taking the time to to talk with me and, and to share your thoughts with our community, um, and and to join us here on this uh, this kind of show of game game changing moments. I know I'm going to see you because you're in Madrid and and you're an active alumnus. So. Um, it's great to have you, and, and congratulations on on not only on on success, but I, I think it sounds to me like it's been a great human experience. Um, it has, in been, addition yeah. to a business experience, and I think that that you've shared a, a number of important messages on that front, and I think those are important messages for our uh, community to hear. So, so thanks very much. Thank you for for inviting me and uh, uh, being able to share uh, a little bit of my memories. Well, thanks. See you soon. <laughs> Thanks to all of you out there who happened to tune in today, our alumni, staff, faculty, students, and anyone else who happened to find us. Thanks for tuning in. If something resonated with you, please feel free to leave comments. And once again, thanks to Vicente Pascual for sharing his insights about his experience with Cabify.